1887, the paleontologist Carlos Amagino unearthed the first fossil of a terror bird, a large toothless jaw. He made this discovery while excavating in a formation in the Santa Cruz province of Argentina. His brother, Florentino Amagino, was the first to describe the specimen and assigned the jawbone to a group of toothless mammals. They named the specimen Forus rocos longissimus, or ragbearer. However, when fossils of another species of terror bird were found, namely Patagornis, the jaw was re-examined and reclassified as a bird. Terror birds have definitely earned their name as flightless and long-legged carnivores. They had a sickle claw on each foot that could tear flesh, similar to a raptor. If that's not scary enough, the largest terror birds grew over two and a half meters or eight feet tall. Their remains are mostly concentrated in South America, but fossils have been recovered in North America, France, Switzerland, and Algeria. Despite the resemblance to the European Gastornis and the Australian Dromornis, terror birds are not closely related to these hook-beak birds. While those are anseriforms and more closely related to ducks, terror birds and their closest living relatives, the Serimas, are currently placed in the clay Australaves, along with parrots, falcons, and all passerines. First, I'll summarize each subfamily of Forest Rossidae, focusing more on the notable species. You can find all the species of terror birds with relevant information in the description of the video. Brontornithidae consisted of three species, all sturdy birds on the taller side. Brontornis was the first specimen discovered in this family. It stood at 2.8 meters or 9.1 feet and weighed up to 400 kilograms or 880 pounds. This makes it the third heaviest bird after Joel Mornis and the elephant birds, which are all extinct, unfortunately. However, Brontornis's placement as a terror bird is still debated as it lacks the characteristic sickle claw. Some scientists think that it should be classified as an anseriform, along with Brontornis and Joel Mornis. The other two species in the family are Cyornis and Parasyornis. Parasyornis is known from a mostly complete skeleton. Mesembryornithidae was a subfamily of medium-sized terror birds. There are three species in the subfamily, including Yaya wavis, which was described relatively recently in 2010. Yaya wavis, like Parasyornis, had pretty well-preserved remains. It was estimated to stand at 1.2 meters or 3.9 feet. The other species of the Sam family, Mesembryornis and Serratus and Milnerwids, wars, sorry, I can't pronounce it, but um, I will put the spelling of that word up in the corner of the video. Anyways, Mesembryornis and Serratus and Milnerwidsi were a bit bigger at 1.5 meters or 9 or 4.9 feet tall. There are three known species of Patagornithidae, which are also medium-sized terror birds. Patagornis was the biggest of the subfamily, standing at 1.7 meters or 5.6 feet and weighing up to 50 kilograms or 110 pounds. On the other hand, Andalagornis was the smallest at 1.4 meters or 4.6 feet in height. Its skull was relatively well preserved, giving scientists a chance to study its hunting techniques. Psilloterinae included seven of the most ancient and smallest species of terror birds. Psilloterus bachmani is known from a mostly complete skeleton and was around the same size as a cerema, at 80 centimeters or 2.6 feet tall. Eleutheronis quoti is also an interesting species since it is one of the three terror birds found outside of South America. Various skeletal elements were unearthed in France and Switzerland. The oldest member of the family was Paleocilloteris, which lived from 58.7 to 48.2 million years ago, in the late Paleocene to the late Eocene of Brazil. Finally, we get to Forest Rosnae, which is by far the most famous group of terror birds. I'm just going to discuss all four of the species in this subfamily because they're all pretty interesting. In general, all the birds in Forest Rosnae were tall and slender, unlike the heavyset Brontornithidae. Forest Rocco Slungismus, 
The first discovered species of terror bird stood at 2.4 meters or 7.9 feet and weighed around 130 kilograms or 287 pounds. Another famous species is Kalenken, which had the largest bird skull ever, measuring to 71.6 centimeters or 28.2 inches in length. It is estimated to be somewhere between 2.2 to 3 meters or 7.2 to 9.8 feet in height. This height range is extremely helpful because it means Kalenken could be possibly be the shortest or the tallest member of the subfamily. Hopefully more skeletal remains are found of this bird in the future so height can be better estimated. Next is Evansensia. Evansensia was a confusing genus to research because according to the reputable Wikipedia, there are two species, D. galliani and D. posi. But after digging into a pretty cool paper called The Systematic Revision of Forest Rossidae, I found that D. galliani was synonymous to D. posi. So there is only one species of Evansensia and Wikipedia has once again betrayed me. <clears throat> and it um, anyways, Devincenzia is probably 2.5 meters or 8.2 feet tall, giving Big Bird a run for its money. Titanus was about the same height as well, but was unique in that it was found in North America, specifically in Texas and Florida. It likely traversed over the Isthmus of Panama about 2.7 million years ago, during the Great American Biotic Exchange. A variety of other wildlife crossed between the continents, too, ranging from sloths to parrots. However, this meant that the two previously separated varieties of creatures could now compete. A lot of the neotropic animals could not compete with the Neoarctic ones. Many North American animals probably caused the extinction of South American animals with similar niches. The placental mammals of the northern continent replaced the marsupials, reptiles, and terror birds as apex predators. So basically, the most plausible reason for a South American terror birds' extinction was competition with placental mammals. Forest Rossidae, the family that includes all except one of the terror bird species, falls under the superfamily Forest Roscoidea. Glavocatavis africana is currently classified under the superfamily, separate from all other species in Forest Rossidae. It is known from a femur bone collected in Algeria. Glavocatavis puts into question where the terror birds originated. The most plausible explanation, according to a study, is that the terror birds originated in Africa and island hopped to South America via the South Atlantic, which at the time was much narrower. African terror birds could also have gotten to Europe by crossing the Tethy Sea. Since many well-preserved remains of terror birds have been found, scientists can piece together a few attributes of the terror bird when alive. A study was conducted on Andalagornis' skull, which found the skull was akinetic, meaning the bones were more fused than normal in birds. This means it was relatively weak when it came to side-to-side -side movements, but very strong with vertical movements associated with repeated attacks. From this information, they concluded that Andalagornis either ate small prey, which didn't really hurt the bird when struggling, or they could have dispatched large prey with a few targeted bites. Comparing various bone lengths, namely the tarsal metatarsus and tibiotarsus, is the standard way to determine how fast the bird could run. In most species in the subfamily Brontornithidae, the tarsal metatarsus was 50 to 60 percent the length of the tibiotarsus. This proportion shows that the subfamily consisted of rather slow moving terror birds. This could mean the species in Brontornithidae were scavengers or ambush predators, unable to reach speeds required to run down prey. Lastly, let's talk about the magnificent Yaya Wavis. Yaya Wavis had a relatively low frequency of hearing compared to other birds. According to the paleontologist The Grange, quote, we calculated that it would have a mean hearing range of approximately 3,800 hertz and a mean hearing sensitivity of approximately 2,300 hertz, end quote. This means that the bird could hear minute movements of footsteps of prey. Based on this finding, De Grange also suggests that Yaya Wavis had a low booming call, quote, because vocalization range of most birds falls within the lower half of their hearing sensitivity range, end quote. Over the last nine minutes, we have learned a lot about terror birds. 
All sources referenced are linked in the description along with relevant information about each terror bird species. If you enjoyed the video, consider clicking that like button, and if you want to see more like this, then subscribe or else you'll be transported back to the Miocene and get eaten by a Kalenkin. I hope you have a wonderful day.